we have a fun class today. Um, and some of us, uh, there has been quite a thing where um, everybody has been asking me about that Phillips grill. So some of us have it and some of us don't. I'm going to cook on it today, but if you don't have that Phillips grill, if you have a grill pan or even a cast iron pan, uh, you can cook your salmon. You can also poach your salmon if you have the bay leaves and you have the thyme and some extra garlic, okay? So um, let me know if you can just, when we're getting ready to do the salmon or there's there's enough, just tell me if, how you're cooking your salmon and I can give you specific instructions, okay? But we're going to, um, if you're gonna poach it, that's a whole other question we should talk right now. If you're not going to poach it, you're gonna grill it, uh, whether on a grill, you put it in your cast iron pan, um, we can also just talk to that, talk about that also, okay? This so, is Joan. I want to poach mine. Okay, so I, Joan, I don't, what you're going to do with your salmon is you're going to get a pot um, about, how many pieces are you doing? Four or two? Two, get yourself a, a, a pot about this size, okay? It's a four-quart pot, okay? Four okay. Quart. Fill it halfway with water. And you're going to put a quarter cup of lemon juice in it because you have enough lemon juice. Because we there's a you, there should be a bunch of lemon juice, the juice of two lemons. So you're going to use a quarter cup of that lemon juice, and you're going to put in thyme and bay leaf and some salt in that water. You want that salt water to taste like the sea, okay? Salty like the sea. So you want to use about two teaspoons or more of salt water. So start to make that solution while I continue doing everything else, okay? That's your poaching liquid. Anyone else poaching? I am, and how much water, sorry, Sam, did you say in the pan? Okay, so in a four quart pan, you're gonna use half of, fill it halfway. So I would okay. say four cups of water. Okay. Okay? Yeah, that's perfect. So what Joan has is perfect. So you're gonna poach that, and in that liquid, you're going to, yep, that's a perfect one, Joan. You're going to put in two cloves of crushed garlic, and then you're going to put in a quarter cup of lemon juice, and then you're going to do um, your, your thyme and your um, bay leaves and salt. So I'll review that again, but go ahead and start getting that together. Those of you who are going to grill, Melody, hello, hello. Hi. Griller, and then Cindy. <laughs> Bernstein over there, you're my griller. And then Maria, we're gonna figure it out, girl. You're gonna. We're <laughs> gonna <laughs> my cast iron. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And we have Juliana there, and she's also probably cast iron. So we've got a few, few different ways. Juliana, are you doing cast iron, honey? Did your girl come? Unmute it. Yes. Okay, perfect. So cast iron is going to be, you know, just heat it, heat your cast iron over medium heat, put a little bit of oil on the pan, not a whole lot, just, you know, just with a paper towel, just put a little oil on it. Because if you put too much, it's going to go splashing and, and doing all that. And we really just want to sear, okay? Okay, thank you. So that's what we're going to do for that. And for everyone else, you're going to watch me on the grill, okay? We're going to, and Juliana ordered the grill, she'll get it on Tuesday. Yeah. And What's then that look like? Pardon? What was that, Brenda? That's what it looked like. Okay, you're, I'm going to show you what the grill looks okay. like. Because you weren't here last class, last weekend, a couple yeah. weekends ago, where we talked about the Philips indoor grill. And yeah. uh, it's really quite something for just grilling inside, and I've totally fallen in love with it. So that's why we're, start, we're just going to cook with it today, okay? All right, so let's go over our ingredients, okay? We're going to do our quarantini first, but I'm going to go over everything. So watermelon. We're going to make watermelon juice in our Vitamix with a little bit of water. Um, we're going to make a simple syrup. I have hot water already heated. So a simple syrup of coconut palm sugar, half a cup of coconut palm sugar, half a, half a cup of water, okay? Hot water. We're going to do lemon juice. I have almost a cup of lemon juice, please. And then I have our gin, okay, which is not to be forgotten unless you don't drink, okay? So there we go. Cindy, I know you're not doing a gin. 
<laughs> and Cindy also bought, purchased watermelon juice by Evolution that comes, which makes life a lot easier, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so we have that. Then we're gonna garnish with just a, a sprig of, um, of mint that I have just from my um, garden box. And then we're gonna just pour it all together and make our drink. So that's pretty straightforward. So we're gonna do that. So I'm just gonna set it to the side and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is get ready for our corn. And st so you should probably also put on a, a, a steamer or a pot of water on medium low because you're going to cook your corn and allow it to cool a little bit. And then I'm gonna show you how to make perfect um, slices down to make these wonderful pieces of corn, okay? And that's what's going into our salad. I have an heirloom tomato. It's one of those Kremlin tomatoes, black creme, really good. I have our za'atar spice for the za'atar oil. I have some crushed garlic right here. Um, lemon juice, these are all for the dressing. Olive oil right here. And then we're gonna cut up some more. I did half of my wedge of, a half of uh, my red onion and we wanna cut into slivers like that, okay? That will all be the dressing. And then inside my fridge, I have arugula that we're gonna combine. And then um, my salmon, of course, is sitting inside the fridge. And then we'll go over that as I'm getting ready to cook it, okay? So I think we're all set. So put, put a pot on the stove if you haven't cooked a pot of water to cook your corn, okay? And I cut them in half so that it's a lot easier to cut and they cook a little quicker and they cool a little quicker. All righty, so here we go. We ready? I don't know. It looks like there's a reflection of my dress. But let me put on my it's apron. It's not your dress. It's the metal tray. I'm thinking. Oh. I think it's coming from the skylight. Yeah. It's okay. It might, it might go away now. All righty, so let's get started. Okay, so I have my hot water. We're going to make our quarantini. So, well, can you get me a cup of cold water and some ice and some glasses? Mm -hmm. How Please. much cold water? A cup of cold water. One cup. So we have this, which we're going to make. So I'm going to do, you don't, do not need to use a shaker for this, okay? We're just going to put it inside a little container here and give it a good stir, okay? All right, hot water, ladies. So this is going into my coconut palm sugar. If you don't have coconut palm sugar, use brown sugar, okay? Half a cup of um, coconut palm sugar or brown sugar, or even white sugar if you have it. I just choose coconut palm sugar. It's low glycemic. And I'm gonna add a half a cup of water to it. That's how I'm making my syrup, okay? So, and then I stir it to, to, to make it dissolve. So half a cup of sugar and half a cup of hot water, okay? Is this right, Sam? Yes, absolutely. Yay! And it'll, it'll have a little brownish color, but it's okay. The lemon, the, the other colors will dilute it so it won't look so dark, okay? So we have that. Now what we're gonna do, uh, is that a cup of water? Is that the cup mm -hmm. of water right there? That's one cup of water. Okay, wonderful. So in my blender, Let's see, is everyone catching up to me? Everyone catching up? We're gonna add in a cup of water. And this is about three cups. This is half of a watermelon. I think it's about three cups. Yum. And it's a really sweet watermelon. Okay, so Maria, you got it. Brenda, you're looking good. Take it off mute. If, if you want to talk, take it off mute. <laughs> Did you, what's in the blender? Just the Just water, cold water, one cup of cold water and your chopped watermelon. Okay? We're oh, just gonna not, blend. The, not, not the brown, not the sugar yet? Not yet, I'm just gonna blend this up and make a liquid and then I will add in the rest, okay? Okay. 
Okay, ready? I'm gonna blend. It's about all I need. Watermelon, it's really fast in the blender, right? To get it pureed. Okay, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna strain it just in case there's any seeds. So if you guys have a little strainer, do the same. So we're straining it. Just because I know mine had a few more seeds than before, okay? I'm gonna get two cups and then put it inside my pitcher. So I'm just gonna help it through. There we go. So you guys, who have, whoever hasn't been on the last cooking class know I have a new format. I put my camera in front. I got a whole new tripod system and it makes life a little bit easier. So is there too much light in this room? Yeah, but it's a skylight. The skylight's in. Yeah, and I can't do anything about the skylight. Not this light here. No. no. Yeah. I'm sorry guys, there's a lot of sun inside my kitchen today. I think this is the only thing. That yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, I was saying to maybe next time we'll not use metal trays with the okay, light, but yeah. maybe like a black tray or something. Yeah. Is that true? Okay, I'm yeah. almost at two cups. There we go. How's everyone doing? Cindy, you skip this step really easily, huh? Joan? She's unscrewing her bottle. <laughs> um, I got this watermelon that has seeds in it. It's organic. I'm just, it's fine. I'm just straining out every, just okay. blend it and straight. That's okay. why I'm straining too, because I saw a little bit of seeds in mine as well. Even though it says seedless, it's going to have some seeds in it. But I got an organic one that has the old fashioned, all the black <laughs> seeds in it. Right, right, right. Okay. Not to worry, not to okay. worry. Just strain it just like what I'm doing. Okay. And then I'm gonna put that aside and maybe if someone wants to do that, she can get us some more juice. So in here, I'm going to put my watermelon juice, two cups. I'm going to add the coconut palm sugar, it's got a nice brown color because I did that, but some lemon juice, I might add some more. <laughs> I might add some more, it's a little brown for you. Let's add some lemon juice. And that's just the sugar that I choose to use. You don't have to use um, that, but I'm just gonna add a little bit more to make the color look a little bit better. There we go. Ah, okay. And then we're gonna add gin. Oh, look at that, much better. So I added about, I used almost all of my watermelon juice. And then we're going to add our gin. So some glass, glasses, glasses, glasses. So we're gonna add a half a cup of our gin. And this is our favorite Venus Spirits gin that we just love, 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 love. Cindy, how was yours? I think you finished making it already. Is, your, is yours finished? I can't hear you. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Your um, ice is over there. Okay, wonderful. So I'm just giving it a nice stir. It's, it's hysterical. Mine kind of looks tomato juicy. <laughs> but that's only because of the coconut palm sugar. Okay, two glasses, and then I'm going to garnish with a little bit of, it's this right here. Can you get me the, um, the uh, mint? It's in the CSA box, the 
the black box. There we go. So give it a stir. Oh gosh, it looks so good. Love, love how it looks. And this is it. Yep, that's it. Thank you. It's got really nice mint. And then I'm just going to put it on top of each glass. It's like spearmint, which is really nice. And this is our drink. So watermelon blended with a cup of water. Then we uh, strain it. Then we add in our gin. We add in the lemon juice, which is about a cup of lemon juice. So we really put in a lot of lemon juice in this. And then we added um, the syrup. And then the gin. Zoelle, do you want to try it with me? Yes, yes. No, no, no. Come say hi to everybody. Why, why are you so shy? Come on. You want the drink? You gotta come closer. Come closer. There you go. Cheers. Cheers, Maria. Oh, yours looks really good. I love the watermelon rind addition. Love. I know. That's that's great. That's so nice. Oh, it okay. tastes so good, guys. Really good. Yeah, Cheers. Go okay. <laughs> go away. Mmm. Really good. So that's watermelon mm. lemonade. It is yummy. So more on the refreshing side because we're getting into the warmer temperatures. Melody, how did yours turn out? Very refreshing. I really like yeah. it. And, and I made it with sparkling water and I put my little oh. twist of lime in it and it's it's oh. just really good. Yeah, no, that's a great one. That's a great idea adding the sparkling water. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I do, however, feel like mine needs more gin. Oh, and you know what, um, Samantha, I put, uh, I use stevia. Oh, okay. It still came out sweet still. Oh, it still came out sweet. Okay, so you didn't yeah. use a lot. No. I put a bit of a kind of a lot of stevia. <laughs> it's really it sweet. Super sweet. All you it's need good. is a teaspoon. <laughs> oh, <or. laughs> ah! Oops. Okay, now you know for next time. Very little. Yeah. Brenda, how is yours? Yeah. Oh, it looks good. She's that putting it all. That looks really good, Brenda. Oh my God. And Joan? I feel like you guys are so fast. I'm <laughs> it's okay. Just take your time. Catch up. I'm going to move my blender. I love my drink. I had to adjust it a little bit, just adding in all of the watermelon juice. But then when I did that, I realized I needed more gin. So anyway, cheers. And we're moving on to our main recipe. So I'm really excited about this recipe and um, it's really good. So did anyone start? Okay, Joan, I'm waiting for you, but just keep doing what you're doing. I'm, I'll talk us through and I'll get, since you're poaching, your water should be, should be boiling or bubbling a little bit, okay? So let's move on. I had music at one point. I don't know where it was. I've got salmon. Okay, so here's my salmon. I don't know if you can kind of see what I got there, but I'm going to cut it into four fillets, okay? It's really sad because I got invited out to dinner tonight. So, <laughs> <laughs> and a, a social distancing dinner, but um, but my my salad will work. I'm so I'm, I'm gonna do half of it tossed and everything. So you'll see. But I've got my salmon right there. I'm gonna cut them into slices. I'm gonna get out my grill, okay? And so Brenda, for you, you're gonna see what my grill looks like. <laughs> Okay, so if you just got the grill, and this applies to Melody and Cindy, cover it with foil, okay? Take that, look how nice and shiny mine is. 
It's never seen food, okay? So when you get, when you get it, you really have to cover it. Do not use it without covering it. Plus it makes cleanup a complete breeze, okay? You don't have to do anything, just slide this out, take the foil off, throw it in the trash. Wipe the inside, and then that's it. So turn it, plug it in. The grill part comes off, so that's an easy one, two, one, two, clean, right? That's it, and then you wipe out the sides right here, and that's it. The heat comes from the sides. It's a smokeless grill. So your house, none of the oils or anything from what you're barbecuing is going to come up into the air because it hits heat. It hits a cold pan on the bottom. Okay, so that's the whole idea of the smokeless grill, okay? So I'm gonna turn mine on, I'm gonna put it on low, okay? Cindy, do you have yours on and on low? Covered in foil. Okay, great. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. You should feel the heat emanating from this thing, right? And you could see a little glow going on in there. You will, yep, I see the glow. Is, is low the middle one? I didn't read the instructions. Is low yeah, the middle, the middle one? one is low. Okay. And the one that says one, it has like a notch, is high. Okay. Okay, so this is our grill. If you're going to use a grill pan, first of all, before we even get there, I wanna make sure who has their corn started or on its way, the water should be boiling, started, everything. Because when we put the salmon on here, I'm gonna focus on corn and putting the salad together. Okay? Okay. Alrighty, so we're letting that heat. But what we're going to do is let that heat up, let your pan heat up for the salmon if whoever's using cast iron. And Joan and, and uh, who's, who else is poaching? Brenda, you're going to go to your stove and boil that water for your poaching liquid. Let's talk about you guys. While everyone else's pans and grills heat up, let's talk about your poaching liquid again, okay? About four cups of water. You want your salmon to be fully submerged inside okay. of that water. The water should taste like the sea, salty like the sea. So start off with about two teaspoons of salt, but you might need a lot more, two tablespoons. I just don't know what salt you have. You have kosher salt, sea salt, whatever. Sea salt would be best. Okay. Then you're gonna add in a quarter cup of lemon juice when it's boiling, and you're gonna add in your bay leaves and thyme, which were in the original recipe. I just wasn't sure anyone was poaching, so I sent you a different version of the second one. So is it nice and salty, Joan? Yeah. Salty it's good. If it's already boiling, do we put the salmon in or just let it boil in? Yeah, turn it down just a little bit so okay. you don't want a rolling boil, but turn it down a little bit. When you put in your salmon, the temperature is going to drop, and then you could turn it back up. Okay. It's going to cook it for about five minutes. And then Can we do that now? or wait yeah. you can do it now you can take it out with a slotted spoon and put it on, on a piece of paper towel to absorb the water okay a plate with a piece of paper towel okay so that's our process for that let me know when you guys have your sample in your pot And then when you get your salmon in your pot, you could put your corn in your pot, in a different pot. Okay. How's everyone doing? Good? Good. Don't be afraid to speak up if you have a question, okay? We're all here together. And it's a lot easier to ask a question now that we have just us chickens. More okay. manageable. More manageable. <laughs> I have had them from I don't know. Like, it's just been so crazy here. Crazy in a good way, but crazy, you know? Okay, so I'm taking two tablespoons of olive oil. This is what I'm going to dress my salmon with, okay? Two tablespoons of olive oil, a little bit more. The rest is gonna be for our dressing. 
I'm gonna get some salt and pepper. Zo, can you pass me the salt cake over there, please? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'm gonna just pour it over my salmon and then start to grill. So there I go, add a little pepper in there. A little bit of salt, right? I did about a half a teaspoon of salt. Mix it a little bit. And then I'm just gonna brush it onto my salmon. So here we go, generously get it on and then it'll be ready for the grill. So the grill temperature, you're gonna turn it to high right now, okay? And then we'll turn it back to down to low. But for now, turn it to high. Just get it really warm now. And we're gonna brush the other side of the salmon when we put it on. Juliana, are you doing okay? Good? Perfect. I'm doing great. Hmm. Great, thank you. You look wonderful in your kitchen over there, huh? Where's the kids? Where's the family? The girls are downstairs cleaning their rooms. Oh, that's a good task right now. <laughs> and task. they're very dirty. They need to be cleaned. <laughs> My little one just finished um, like eight loads of laundry. I don't, I don't need, I was like, you cannot wash your clothes every two months. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It is a lot of laundry that piles up. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know how to manage. Have you taught them how to do their own laundry yet? So, because it just works better if I do the washing and drying and then they do the folding and putting away. Oh, that's smart. I hate folding. Oh yeah, I don't enjoy it either. Yeah. So, <laughs> so bad. Anyway, good luck with that. Your is the one you really hate. I know. Okay, so guys, mm -hmm. flip over your salmon on, on where the skin side was. Just um, oil it down and we're gonna put it skin side down. I asked for skinless fillets, but either way, just put it skin side down, okay? So here we go. One, add a gentle sizzle. Two, three, and four. Yay! So keep it on high. Okay, I'm gonna keep this and just kind of go like this. It doesn't need like any kind of preheating. It gets to the right temperature pretty quickly. How are you doing, Cindy? Did you get yours on yet? Can't hear ya. I just have to cut the thin end off and then I'm gonna put it on. Mine is not even. Oh, okay. And it looks pretty thin, so it'll cook quickly. Yes, but okay. I need to cut off this really thin end. Okay. All righty. So I'm going to put my salmon back on here. So the whole idea, Brenda and, and Joan, are you guys watching your salmon to make sure it doesn't overcook? So depending on how thick it is, you need it in there about five minutes to properly poach. And, okay. if, it, and if it doesn't look like it's opaque all the way through, leave it in another couple of minutes. Okay, so hi. Um, I haven't put mine in yet, but I have this, do you know this cloth for poaching? Should I use this? You can use that, or if you have a slotted spoon, you'd be just That's fine. That's just as easy, okay. It's just as easy. I wouldn't waste that nice cheese <laughs> cloth. Use it for when, and fish it up, because what's gonna happen is that just will never be able to be reused. Oh, <laughs> someone gave it to me. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> one day we'll make lebna or something, and we'll do cheese, you know, and we'll, we'll squeeze it out in that uh, cheese cloth, but 
right now, if you have a slotted spoon, I'll show you what I have. I have this, and it's really, um, uh, yeah, you have something like that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's right. Right. even better. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Yeah, you have everything oh, you need. Brenda has the same one. Brenda, you're perfect. You guys are great. You have the same one. <laughs> Twins. <laughs> I've never ever seen those. Before. I've never ever seen those before. So for the two of you to like have that, that's pretty awesome, you know? Pretty. I've been at Marshall's for five dollars. Um, okay, I need to go there and grab. Now that they're back open, I need to go there and get one. Of those. Now you put it. You say you just put it on paper towel now, right? Yeah, just put it on a dish, put it on a dish with paper towel lining it. Because okay. I want you to make sure all of the water drains off of it. Okay. okay I don't want wet fish inside of our um, salad. Okay, so corn, corn should be in your hot water, okay? My salmon is sizzling and cooking away under high heat. Melody, how are you doing? High heat? It's sizzling? Is it sizzling? It's sizzling and it's thin though. It's not that like yeah. yours. So you're going to want to turn yours in two minutes. Okay. Mine are thicker pieces, so guys, don't mind me. I don't know how thick your piece is, but I'm confident you know how to cook salmon. <laughs> so I don't have to really worry about you. And Cindy, I know you know when yours is cooked because cook me salmon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, so that's I'm watching. Yay! Okay. I, I think that looks good. Okay. Nice and hot. And it was about five minutes, Brenda. So I think you might be good, okay? Okay. So let it cool down, just pat it dry. I've never poached salmon before. <laughs> well, looks like you just did it. And um, take, take, taste it too. You should taste a little piece to see, make sure it's cooked, that it's all good. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Oh, great. Wonderful. So wow. you see, you have to have the salt though. If it doesn't, it's gonna be very bland, okay? We don't it's, re <laughs> it's really salty. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not too salty, but. When you mix it with everything, it'll be fine. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is, every, does everybody have their corn cooking or corn shucked? Because I wanna show you how I shuck my corn. My, my salmon is gonna be cooking for about five more minutes on this side before I flip it. So don't pay me any attention if your salmon is thinner and it already done, okay? Um, Brenda, I see you were cutting your corn. I'm actually cutting a mango. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I just okay. <laughs> that, I'm making a mango salsa on the side while we're cooking. Oh yeah, sure, go right ahead. Okay, so who has their corn ready or cooking? I do. Thumbs up, ready or cooking? Juliana? I already sliced ready. mine, unfortunately. The water is still boiling. Okay, great. You're gonna drop in your corn when it starts to boil for five minutes, okay? So you're, you're gonna be a little bit behind. Everyone else, your corn, it's two, ready. three minutes, four minutes, you just wanna blanch it really till it gets bright yellow. Or if you're using white, just um, about three minutes is enough. I can get really sweet yellow corn. When everybody gets theirs out, I'll do the, I'll do the cutting. But for now, let's start chopping our vegetables. Get, a, get out a bowl. A, a glass bowl or a big enough bowl for us to work our salad, okay? So I'm gonna do the same. Let me get my glass bowl. Uh, yeah, I have mine. Okay, glass bowl. Oh. Have there, that's your corn? Yeah. So you're done, Brenda. You're good. <laughs> So don't worry about your corn. Everybody else worry about your corn. What do you have to there, Cindy? What are you showing Not me? It's a pot. I don't have a ball. <laughs> yeah, whatever you whatever you can find. It's me. Cindy, 
Sam, I turned my Sam in two minutes ago. When's okay, it good. I think it might be ready if you, because you had a really thin piece of salmon, right? Right. You want to make sure, I like my salmon medium, but yeah. however you like your salmon, if you like it well done, keep it on another minute or two. If you like your salmon medium well done, you should probably take it off, but you want to touch the middle, take a knife and just poke the middle and just make sure it's cooked all the way. I think it's done. Do I take it off the grill or do I just leave it there? Take it off the grill. Put it on. Put it on a little sheet or a, or a plate. Okay. Okay. Whoever's fish is done, I'm turning mine right now from skin side to um, flat side up. Oh, it looks so good. It's really good. <laughs> I love this grill, guys. We need to make me start selling these because these are really nice. I think I could sell these grills. Well, when we were doing demos in Williams, Williams Sonoma, Sonoma, I was their uh, personal Phillips Focus Grill Ambassador. At Williams Sonoma, we really did sell a lot of these yeah. grills because everybody, we would put our Moroccan spice on it and everybody would just come right in. So let's cut our, oops, I'll move this here. Let's cut our onions, okay? So I just put my really nice salmon. I'm excited about it. Onions, we're gonna cut into slivers. So if you can see what I'm doing. I hope you can. I'm a little bit nervous that you guys can't see me as well as it's before. But Zoelle says you are. everybody can see me. My fish is finished. Okay, take it off and look. put it on the plate. And it's done, it. look. Oh, it looks really good. Make sure your corn cooks, Cindy. I have my corn cooked and cut up already, ready to go. Okay. Perfect. Okay, and I have my green, I'm cutting up my uh, red onions now into slivers, okay? Here they are. Into my bowl. Take a drink. I like this drink, so I do too. I generally dislike watermelon drinks, but I really like right. this one. I think it's because it was strained, so that kind of like yeah, mealiness of the watermelon texture is not there. Next, we're gonna get our hair and tomato side and start to cut that up as well. Joan, how are you doing, dear? Um, am I on? Uh, yeah, great. The salmon, the po I never poached salmon before. It's beautiful and it tastes <laughs> great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's awesome. Great. I'm glad to hear it. That's what it's about, right? We're learning, learning. new techniques on how to use. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm just taking out the skin part, the stem out of my heirloom tomato. I got a really fun one, so it's not like a, your normal um, tomato. Give us a, a different color. And I'm just gonna cut it into nice wedges, just as it's pictured. And um, get it into our salad bowl. Okay. Now, also, I just want to just throw this out there. It's cucumber season. I have nothing but cucumbers. I will probably add some cucumbers to this salad. So, just throwing that out there. And I'm going to show you how I ribbon cucumbers. I might as well. How do you cut the cucumbers? I use a man, um, I do use a mandolin, but I'm gonna show you with a vegetable peeler, okay? And I'll show you. This one from my salmon is looking good. Oh, it looks really good. Well, it does seem like the poaching is a lot faster than the grilling. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. So you dump your corn in with this whole salad here. 
And then, I don't know, is it, does anyone have their uh, phone? Your water was still boiling. Did your corn, is your corn ready yet? My corn is ready, Joy. Okay, take your corn out. One cold water over it. Do not handle cold corn. I'm going to show you how I cut it. Right? Just hang on. I'm waiting to pick it up. Here's Maria. Okay, so watch me here. Flat side down. I'm holding on to the top of the nut, right? And then not too deep, but deep enough because I want those nice kernels to hold together. And then I literally tip it just a little bit like this so that it doesn't break as it's falling, okay? So I make the first initial cuts on the top. As I slice down, I lean into my cutting board. So it gently rolls off, okay? Ready? Gently rolls off. Be careful it doesn't slide out from under you, but just put a little pressure. Don't want it to break, okay? There we go. Perfect. And then you'll have it all the way around. I suspect that's how you're going to do it. Brenda, hang on with your cucumber, okay? I'm going to show you Perfect. how I do mine, okay? So here we go. I'm putting that also in the mix. Actually, I'm going to leave this aside because I'm going to do a little part just in case they break up. But it's so beautiful and top of color. Okay, my salmon is almost ready. I'm gonna take it out in two seconds and then move my grill and I'm done, right? Then we'll put together our dressing. Okay. Oh my God, that looks so beautiful. Oh my God. If it was anybody else, I would have canceled dinner. <laughs> you can't cancel on Cindy. <laughs> she cancels on you all the time though, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so my salmon is nice and done. And so well, you're not gonna eat it. What no, are you doing? I'm not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, grill is off to the side, and this is what my grilled salmon looks like right here. Oh, right. Yeah, it lovely. looks really good. This grill is really amazing. Okay, I'm going to get my serving tray. And I could probably use something bigger, but anyway, I have my plate. So let's make our zatar oil dressing, okay? So. So while well, do we go anywhere? Well, I'll just use it in this. And I'll use my big whisk. Okay, so I'm grabbing a whisk. My favorite whisk. So my salmon is, my corn is cut. And in my bowl, I have onions, tomatoes, and I have corn, okay? So next step, we're going to take our oil, which should be about um, a half a cup left over. We have a clove of garlic minced, optional, but you can add it, okay? We have, uh, let's see, this is about three tablespoons of lemon juice. 
and you want to whisk that together really well. And then we're going to add our zatara spice, which I know you all have. <laughs> I'm watching Zoelle because as soon as I'm finished with the class, she hogs all the food. She eats it. It's like she hasn't eaten in three days. Well, it's usually my first meal of the day. So I'm starving. So I usually. So she's pretty. looking at me with hungry eyes as I make this dress. I'm really excited to eat this. Okay, and then I have two tablespoons of. Zatar, while my Zatar gently beats Middle Eastern spice, okay? So this is our dressing. This dressing is fabulous on lots of things. So you should have this like at the ready, waiting for you in your fridge for a regular salad, tomato salads, anything. It is really tasty. So mm. if it needs more salt and pepper, adjust. But just give it a nice whirl. You'll see the sesame seeds, the sumac has that tangy, tangy, tangy taste to it. Really good, okay? I'm gonna get a fork, two forks, and we're gonna break up our salmon. Just break it, break it up nicely. You want nice big chunks, okay? And that's why we did it without the skin. It's a little easier. Oh, this looks really good, Zoe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me know when everyone is finished with their dressing and we will put the dressing on our, um, on our, oops. Right here, I forgot I was gonna show you this, the cucumber, okay? Yeah. So look at, look at how I do it. This is a washed cucumber from my garden. I literally just go down just like that with my vegetable peeler. I lost that one. But I'm gonna show you what I do. I'm just going to do a couple. So nice thin pieces, right? You can leave them ribbony or you can take them and do a nice roll, okay? Start from the thicker side. So you have like one of these, okay? Yeah. So start from the thicker side. This is how we prettify our salad. <laughs> so, all over it. <laughs> yeah. so we're gonna prettify and just make these beautiful little, if you have a cucumber, you can do this. This is just totally optional. But because I had so many cucumbers left over in my, um, from my garden, my goodness, I have so many. If you guys were closer, I would totally offer you all. Juliana, you can get cucumbers. And Cindy. Thank you. I have big, long cucumbers. So here we go. I'm just rolling, rolling, rolling. And I'll roll a few and set them aside. And then I'll add them at the end. But yeah, this is what I like to do in my free time, right? Roll cucumber. <laughs> I love it though. It makes it everything look so pretty. Okay. So how's our dressing coming? Is our dressing coming okay, jo Joan? Dressing tastes great. So mm -hmm. what it seems like a lot of the spice, but that's I Did you use a did you use a half a cup of olive oil? Yeah. And then put, and then the lemon juice, and then put all of your, um, yes. But is that, that doesn't look like a lot in there. Is that this together? Oh. That? oh, no, this is the, okay, this is my okay. the oil and vinegar in here, and these are the spices. Okay. It just seems like so much, but that's right, isn't it? Whatever it was, two tablespoons or. Yes, two tablespoons. Okay. What you have left over, Joan? Put in your refrigerator because you can use it on salad. Okay. It really lasts a long time, okay? Oh, okay. great. Don't worry. And you oh, might want to the salad again and it'll be already made. So, Sam? Yeah? yeah. For the dressing, I just want to make sure I did it right. Olive oil, lemon juice, 
Salt and pepper. Half a cup of olive oil, three tablespoons of lemon juice, uh, garlic, a clove of garlic, um, uh, mince Crushed. would be better, yeah. and the zahar spice. Mm -hmm. Two tablespoons. Okay. Wait. Thank you. Three, yeah, two tablespoons of the zatar spice, okay? okay? So that's what we have here. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put half over my dressing and toss and see if I need any more, okay? And I'm I sorry, Sam. Wait, what is your, sorry, you put the dressing over the tomatoes or the salmon? No, the tomato, the salad. Okay. Okay, we're gonna put the rest as a drizzle over everything else. And then we have our greens. Let's not forget our arugula or spinach or any kind of baby greens that you have. This, this looks amazing. It, it smells amazing. How much dressing do you put on the salad? I put about half of what I made on the salad. But listen, I'm making, I'm doing the recipe true. So I really have four pieces of salmon and, um, so I'm using, so you don't have to overdress, just to do a couple spoonfuls at a time until you get the right consistency. Okay. I'm getting my fruit a lot. Okay, and I'm doing a bit of arugula down on my plate. I also, you can also use spinach. I think I might use. You don't like spinach. Yeah, Zoella doesn't like spinach, and she's gonna like tear into this minute. This class is over, so <laughs> I'll let you take a picture first. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I have a plate on a bed of arugula, and you can add much more if you'd like. Okay. And you can put some on top as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our salad, our greens, and um, our corn and tomatoes and start to pile on. And then we're going to put in between, okay? And here we go. Ah, looking good. This is so summery and nice. It's just gonna be perfect for like, you're gonna keep this in your, your, your repertoire for August and July. Okay, there we go. And it depends, use as much onion as you like. My family is not a big onion family, so we don't have a lot of uh, onions. But I really like raw onion. So now mm. I'm putting my salmon in between the pieces of tomatoes. And if you, this is really nice too if you're having guests and you're doing a big platter. It is just perfect for that. Okay. It looks oh my God, it's so beautiful. I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea, right? Oh my gosh. But what you wanna do, and I'll just impart this, I love eating the rainbow, okay? And that's what this is all about, okay? Eating seasonal, in-season fresh food, okay? And making it look beautiful and taste beautiful. Brenda, these yes. little spurs of, of uh, cucumber roll nicely get just nestled in here in between in between you got it yep and that looks so gorgeous yeah all righty and then now we put on a little additional dressing over the pieces of salmon yay this looks so good, you guys. And just gorgeous. I, I love salmon. I eat salmon. I eat it like, I swear, every other day. I just love it so much. 